So John Levi recently released a video called Lost North America. If you're not sure who John Levi is, I'm, I'm very surprised you're watching my channel, but I'll put the link in the description. You can check out his stuff. Um, he, well, let me just play it for you. Like the ancient masters. But here we see a map. And I've seen many. It seems like today I'm using the worst ones. But before things really get rocking in America, we seem to see this super castle with the name of Norum Bega. Or maybe just Norum, and this Ega might mean something else. So here it is, Norum Bega in Virginia. And I thought, where could this be? So here we go. Let's go to Virginia. And in Virginia, I only see one part that has a similar inlet, if we're just dealing with Virginia. There we go. They've created Maryland, and they've also stuck this little island we call Washington, D.C., in this same spot. And I think this is our Norumbega. Everything from Washington to Baltimore. And in so... On that note, why don't we take a look at Washington, D.C. So if we look at the conventional historical narrative surrounding Norm Bega, um, they, they mention it as a legendary settlement in northeastern North America. Um, uh, let's see here. It was alleged that the houses had pillars of gold and inhabitants carried quartz of pearls on their heads. So a real mythical uh, narrative surrounding this location. And if we look at one of the old maps, we have Norm Bega here. Um, in a similar way that John Levi illustrates in his video, let's look at the shape of this river here and then compare that to the Google map and the shape of the river here. You can actually see the bends in the river look, uh, look very similar to what we're seeing here with the uh, Potomac River. So in this video we're going to be focusing on the architecture of uh, the old Norumbega, let's say, modern day washing town, the washed town, uh, in the District of Columbia, Columba being the goddess of the new world. Uh, and it is, it is not a state, it is a district outside of the laws of the United States of America. And you tell me, could this be the uh, lost city of gold, uh, renamed and repurposed for the new world? And what we're going to see in Washington, D.C. is uh, is quite spectacular. And we have, uh, of course, conventional historical narrative to tell us uh, when these things were built and what type of social movements um, inspired the building of these structures. But here on this channel, we question the historical narrative and we look at these buildings um, in a different light as being possibly left over from a previous civilization, the old world. Um, and hijacked by the usurpers and the creators of the new world. We're looking at very old um, photographs here. This is an early 1900s photograph of Washington, D.C. And we have spectacular architecture. This is the Raleigh. Not the only rally. We'll see the Rally Hotel coming up. But you can see all the evidence of the old world architecture with the mansard roofs and the very ornate dormers. We have the uh, Antiquitech gate fencing on the roofs. Uh, circular portholes, for lack of a better term. Beautiful architecture. Not really befitting of the 1800s, despite the fact that uh, they will explain this away as the capital city. Uh, of the country and, and because of that 
they will suggest that uh, there's a justification for all of this type of architecture. So we begin with the old post office. You can see here, turned into a hotel in the modern day. Spectacular structure, and if we zoom in, we can see all those indications of uh, what we consider to be a mud flood from the old world. Here's your horse and buggy, your classic horse and buggy, but very well established rail lines, streets, curb work, and windows going below that street level, and very old looking stone. Very old looking. Beautiful structures. Not something that we would undertake in the modern day. We'll see more of that as we move forward. Very difficult to uh, wrap your head around some of this old photography. I think there's a lot of trickery afoot, um, especially with Washington DC as you look into the explanation of many of these old buildings. Um, very well explained the details of uh, how these things came about, the funding, the arguments that happened politically, uh, the architects. Uh, they have really covered their tracks in Washington, D.C., I would suggest. And we have that heavily Masonic influence in D.C. So I think uh, as we get into the f further reaches of the realm, those explanations really thin out. But when we're looking at a uh, political capital like Washington, D.C., we have uh, very elaborate explanations for many of these structures which again I have mentioned I don't trust. I think we're looking at a cover story and a washing of the old town. Possibly the lost city of Norm Vega. And you have a very grand feel to many of the uh, structures in Washington, D.C. And you can see very old early depictions, um, but you're seeing all of the uh, hallmarks of the old world, the cupolas, the columns around the cupola, um, possibly landing docks for air travel, which has been all but wiped out. Um, balloon air travel, let's say, dirigible air travel, which has all been wiped out in our modern day. Wiped out and ridiculed, which is par, par for the course for these uh, um, usurpers and these creators of the New World narrative. And of course, if you question that narrative, or questioned that narrative, you no doubt would have been um, institutionalized in one of the many asylums of the Old World. So here we have a DC asylum. And an early train station, Baltimore and Potomac Station. Spectacular looking structure, no longer stands. You can see the streetcars here. Uh, I assume we're looking at some sort of um, electrical cable here, but we don't really see um, many of the wires in the photo, so often have to wonder what's going on in these early photographs. Here's another uh, picture of that fantastic structure, really. Very, very difficult architecture to uh, achieve. Um, and beautiful, very eye-catching. So, These are all things uh, in this field of research that uh, force us to scratch our heads and wonder what really went on, when were these really built, and uh, are we witnessing or uncovering the whitewashing of the old world in our modern-day new world. Because as time goes by, the History seems to fade. History books seem to get updated and changed, especially with sources like Wikipedia, which change on the fly. What we read on Wikipedia today could be different tomorrow. That's the reason I reference Wikipedia, not as a an information source, but as a false information source. So some of my uh, viewers are often confused with the fact that I use Wikipedia as an information source, but that's the reason. All right, here we look at the very confusing story of the Capitol building. This is supposedly 1863, supposedly under construction, but looking very much complete. This is in the thick of the American Civil War, where they're undergoing construction, which seems a bit silly. If you're in the middle of a war, why would you continue building um, 
the Capitol building. It's, it's very murky waters, the American Civil War, that whole story. And there are other um, good YouTube channels within this community that have covered the idea of Norum Bega. I will link this uh, link in the description to uh, Mind Unveiled, who did a couple of good videos on Norum Bega, and Jared Boosters as well, along with the John Leve video, which I will link as well. So all quality researchers in this um, alternative field of research. Of course, a very grand building. Also featured this in one of my recent videos on the four domes, uh, Washington DC being the seat of power, political and military power for this new world usurping force, along with the spiritual center of the Vatican and um, the financial and let's say monarchical power uh, in London district. Um, Vatican is also a district and uh, the city of London um, in a very similar way that the District of Columbia um, outside of the uh, laws of the country that they they reside in really there's a lot to go into with that one as well but I'd, I'd like to stay focused on the architecture here just to give you a sense of what we're dealing with this was supposedly completed in uh, the 1860s Although there, it's a, like, I, like I mentioned in that video, it's a very murky um, explanation as to how this thing went together. Many different phases, uh, supposedly burned down or partially burned down in the uh, war with the British in the early 1800s. Um, so I suggest much of um, the historical narrative as we're told about the 1800s is a, uh, is a fiction or is a fiction worked into blended in with some truth. It's very difficult to trust much of that. And I think that what we're seeing is a um, covering up of the uh, of what actually happened and a uh, history that favors the usurpers as history tends to do. This is very interesting. This is uh, interior of the Capitol. Um, very interesting stairs I find. Typically on a set of stairs you have a structure what we call the soffit, um, which holds the whole stringer assembly together. You see in many of these government buildings that the um, the stair assembly stops right at the heel of the um, the step, the rise and run of the step, which structurally makes uh, very little sense. So we have to assume either that the structure is coming off of this wall, or that the uh, railing apparatus. Um, is all it's all part of the structure that holds all this together otherwise this was, wouldn't make sense and you can go check this in any building uh, modern day building in your own set of stairs if you're able to see it um, there's typically quite a bit more material here which is basically the backbone of the step stairs in a set of stairs so very interesting and these also look like uh, individual slabs of stone that have been uh, um, pieced together very typical of capital buildings which I suggest are, again, um, remnants of that old world. And before we go any further, I want to talk a little bit about uh, several movements that are um, have been used to explain away the architecture in Washington, D.C. The first one is the City Beautiful movement, which has come up quite a bit in uh, my research. Um, they mention here the City Beautiful movement was a reform philosophy of North American architecture. Um, had to do with promoting beauty not only for its own sake but also to create moral and civic virtue among urban populations. Um, a likely cover story you can even see here the Columbian Exposition being used um, as the uh, the source for ushering in the city beautiful movement which is interesting um, when you do a bit of this research and here you can see DC is one of the early uh, early centers for this so I suggest that's a cover story um, another um, explanation for the architecture of Washington, D.C. falls under the Macmillan Plan. The Macmillan Plan proposed the eliminating of the Victorian landscaping of the National Mall, replacing it with an uncomplicated expanse of grass. Interesting, the demolition, um, erasing of some of the old world, and then replacing it with neoclassical um, 
museums and cultural centers along the mall's east and west axis. So again, I think another cover story to explain a lot of this construction, all this going on in the early 1900s as well. So right in that um, suspicious time period that we like to focus on here in this channel. And I suggest a, yet another cover story for the architecture that we're seeing that is actually much older than they suggest. And you can see the vastness of this architecture um, and all very, uh, very elaborate and ornate, ornately finished. Uh, all, and, and having all the hallmarks of what we consider to be the old world. You can see all the basement windows along the bottom. But really uh, quite eye-catching Washington DC, a lot of columns, a lot of uh, mansard style roofs, uh, towers, all of these things. And apparently once upon a time the largest globe in the world was located in Washington DC. So how's that for setting of the narrative? And when you're setting a narrative you have to um, show the people the new narrative and you have uh, many of these old tours and these old tour uh, vehicles, tour buses, early tour buses I guess to uh, cement the narrative with the people of the time. And if they don't go along with the narrative again we know where they uh, we know where they're sent to. So, um, Very interesting to look at it through that lens rather than a conventional historical narrative. And many of, so many of these structures we're going to be uh, breezing by, but many of them are worth a much closer look. But there's so much to see here in DC. Got a fairly large file here for you. I'm going to cover everything I have, so it will be a longer video. We have an early market. A lot of light coming in, you can see here. You can tell it's a brick structure, the arched windows. Massive complexes though, massive, reminding me of a lot of European cities uh, that are still intact and built in such a way with the courtyards. Monastery. St. Francis, the Franciscan Monastery. And many, many galleries, art galleries, and just spectacular, spectacular city, really old world city. We'll go through some of the churches now. Looking very, uh, very familiar, the architecture. This is an interesting dome. Very high arched dome, difficult. All this very, very difficult architecture to uh, to build. That's why we don't build like this today. Um, very time-consuming, very difficult, very perfect in its geometry and symmetry. And uh, I do suggest that uh, either we can't build like this, or the uh, amount of resources that it would take to build um, these types of buildings these days would uh, exhaust any budget or timeline or time frame for building these things. And even this is a church with the columns, very interesting. Not sure which one this is. If you are if you know anything about the area, as I always say, please feel free to comment. Even if you have to defend the narrative, that's fine. Throw it in the comments. Let me know what you know about the uh, about the uh, region or any of these structures. The Department of Commerce. And just take a look at what we're dealing with here and you can see the vastness of these structures. And just imagine having these uh, these things being constructed in the modern day and the amount of uh, heavy machinery and uh, the amount of manpower that it would take to attempt, even attempt to build such a structure. It's a uh, off the charts and then you, you get the timelines of so many of these going up at the same time within Washington DC and then as you do this research you begin to see that um, many of these structures are going up in all of these other cities and it just becomes so far-fetched that uh, you have to scratch your head and wonder are we being uh, sold a bill of goods on history and are 
we're looking at the remains of what we once were or what once was. Here we have a construction photo, which I've mentioned many times in my videos. Um, become very difficult to believe. This is very curious the way that this is going together. Uh, the stonework here, even the coloration on the stonework is, uh, or discoloration on some of it, it's uh, suspicious to say the least. Is that a construction photo? Is it an elaborate forgery? You tell me. What do you think? Do you trust it? Here we're looking at the Ebbett House. Fantastic structure. Stood for, what is that, 54 years? Really? This thing had to go, did it? I believe that there was a fire in the kitchen. If I, I read a little bit about it. And eventually it led to the structure being torn down. You look at, uh, look at the decoration on every window opening. You have the little uh, covering. Interesting how it changes as we move up as well. Um, just the level of detail. And then, of course, the roof line. And then we have the mansard and the dormers coming off of there. And it's just, really, it is jaw-dropping. I don't think we can shrug this off as ju just the way they built at the time. And then it had to be torn down within 50 years. It's, it's an absurd, absurd assumption. There's much more going on here. And something I suggest is much more sinister um, in the erasing of history. And as we know, history is written by the usurpers, let's say. The victors. And I think there's, there's a bit of language play in what goes on there. The Victorian era, the victory over the old world and the new world usurpers claiming victory in the Victorian era, naming many of these places Victoria. So I think there's, there's more to that story. This is the Ebbett House, or sorry, Edward Everett House. Very, very ornate and elaborate woodwork. These would, this would take years and years and years to finish any of this type of stuff. Even as we go into there, you can see how ornate this is. And these things are everywhere. This is very interesting, too, on this light fixture. Just the way these things are put together. Norumbega. We have covered uh, um, Chilaga, Chicago, being the old Chilaga. And we've covered Hochelaga, possibly being Montreal in Canada. Here we look at Georgetown University. Uh, building's not looking new in any way whatsoever. We do have the horse and buggy here. This is looking like early 1900s. These look very old, look like they've been there for a while. You can see the aging on this structure here. And this is the Healy Hall, two year time period for the construction. Um, in the 1870s, the Healy Hall, two years. How long do you think that would take in our modern day to construct if we could do it? Here's a, here's a good, uh, modern day photograph for you. Two years in the 1870s? Or if I showed you this and I told you this was in, uh, England and I told you it was built in the early 1700s, you would believe me because it looks quite old and I suggest much older than we've been told. So is the history of this great nation um, the greatness of the old world or what we may, might consider to be, many considered to be Tartaria or an, another empire under a different name? And has this all been scrubbed from our history and our memory. I think we need to uh, really start to consider seriously um, the historical deception that uh, and the veil that has been pulled pulled over our eyes and our perception. Because if we take this at face value, um, we, we can only do that by employing cognitive dissonance. 
because there's no way that these structures are built within these time frames. And uh, that alone tells us that there's a lie. And if there's one lie, how many lies are we dealing with? Just one lie? Or are we dealing with an entire uh, fiction that has uh, shown, revealed itself? Beautiful structures. Beautiful. Here we have the Daughters of the Revolution in the Hotel Mayflower. Daughters? Really? Hmm. I don't mean to insult anybody, but uh, we know they invert everything, so it's... I'll leave it at that. So many hotels and massive structures. Just keep moving along just to give you the visuals. This is the new rally building, which I mentioned earlier. Let me jump back to here before we go. Any further, a little blurb about the rally hotel. Raised in 1911, was converted into a hotel in 1893. I renamed the rally hotel. Uh, raised in 1911 and rebuilt as a 13 story Beaux Arts hotel. Yeah, yada yada yada. You get these explanations, and like I mentioned, very detailed explanations. And uh, in 1964, the rally was demolished. Hmm. Interesting. Here we have another hotel that didn't last very long, we're told. Again, looking at f about 40 years for this structure to uh, remain intact. Look, look at how the ent entry door is below street level. Isn't that interesting? You have to walk down on the corner here to enter the hotel. Or you walk up under what looks like a temporary makeshift uh, um, awning assembly. The Shoreham Hotel. Here we have a second version of the Shoreham Hotel. Supposedly, uh, construction began in 1929 and they celebrated the grand opening in 1930. And we know that because there were 5,000 people. Come on. A year to build this? Oh, sorry, to build this? Hmm. Yeah, I have my doubts and I hope you can see why. And this is just a little peek at the type of architecture or sort of construction of a building like this uh, as that still stands to the, in the modern day. Very well built brick construction. There you have the mansard roofs. Beautiful structure. Look at these, uh, even the railing on the balconies are made out of brick, curved brick. Wardman Park Hotel. And again, a long-winded explanation. You can see here, 1917, 1918, opened, but no festivities were held apparently because they were illegal during the Spanish flu epidemic. Uh, yes, the narrative repeats itself. The Willard Hotel, yet again, having all those hallmarks of the old world. And then a quick peek of the interiors that are Par for the course, of course. Of course, of course. Still stands today. The Hotel Willard or the Willard Hotel. Beautiful. And this is what you would see if so many of these structures weren't torn down. And Washington, D.C. retaining a lot of the old world. Uh, explained away under a different umbrella. So much, much to see there. Oh, house office building cannon. Three year build time under that uh, City Beautiful movement. Um, let's take a look. So many of these structures. We'll take a closer look at this one though. Here's your modern day view. Um, let's look at the interior. Check out that floor. Check out the curved tile work. Circular tile work. Um, we have the rotunda and the column work all ticking these boxes old world boxes for us truly spectacular absolutely ridiculous to suggest that this thing was put together in three years in the early 1900s at a time when technology was changing so fast we are told very ridiculous 
Jefferson Memorial here. There he is. Thomas Jefferson. Hard to know what to make of these historical figures in American history and all of history, really. Um, and we know that there is, again, a, a underlying heavy Masonic undertones to a lot of this. So we have to reserve uh, a little bit of doubt, I think, as to uh, what they tell us about these figures. Here's another figure, Carnegie. The, the man who donated all this money to create all these libraries. Check this building out. Do we have a timeline here? Here we go. I missed it. 1901 to 1903, two-year build time for this baby. Again, all in that time period. You can just imagine what it should look like if all of these stories, construction stories, are true. Uh, why don't we have, you know, shots of the whole city under construction at that time? Because it seems to be what's going on. Uh, and you would have to have hordes and hordes and hordes of uh, construction workers, skilled construction workers, to pull this type of stuff off. Uh, and again, we know that uh, it's going on in all these other cities as well. So, again, the story, the bottom falls out of the story. And one thing I forgot to do that I usually do is to show you the population demographics. So we're looking at a modern day DC, just under 700,000 people. 1900 to telling us it was just under 300,000 people, which is a good sized city for that time period. So this gives you an indication of the amount of people that were living here at the time. So now let's take a close look at the Library of Congress. Built in a six year time period in the 1880s to 1894, at a time where there was about supposedly about 200,000 people living in Washington, D.C. Let's look at the interior of this magnificent structure. And you tell me, if, you tell me, is the story on the up and up? Is this something they were able to pull off in Washington, D.C. in the late 1880s? Or is this inherited from a previous advanced civilization? Stolen and claimed, rewritten, history rewritten. You tell me. If you feel the need to defend the narrative, go ahead. But I'm telling you, this is not built in that time period, as they say. I really do not believe it. Truly, truly, truly spectacular in all ways. And if you've been to the Library of Congress, let me know your feeling when you walk into this uh, building. Check out, check out the symmetry here. Ooh. Really a jaw dropper of a building. Jaw dropper. Truly spectacular. And apparently this is the uh, open rotunda area for that building. The vastness of it is just is beyond belief. Truly. And this is uh, a building that deserves much more of a spotlight. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to keep moving on. But we'll stop and stare for a little while before we do. Amazing. The Library of Congress, built in six years, 1888 to 1894. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Memorial Continental Hall, six year time period. So the, this took as long as the Library of Congress, what, 15 years later, 20 years later? This small building here. Again, I don't believe that either. I'll take a look at the interior. And there we have Washington, Washington. This is uh, a grafted fiction on top of uh, um, a true history. If we look at that um, Mind Unveiled video, um, they do mention the founding documents of the United States possibly being um, a parting shot from the previous civilization as a way to preserve or regain or um, what once was knowing that this usurping force was um, 
was uh, invading and taking over everywhere, which is very interesting. I think the founding documents in the United States are really the uh, shining light for uh, mankind and a way for us to get out from under the thumb of this usurping force. Here we have a Masonic gathering, just to show you how silly all of this is. And I'll tell you, it's just a bit of fun. And they do this type of stuff to illustrate that, but much more goes on beneath the surface, I would suggest. Masonic Hall, or Temple, Masonic Temple. Jumping around a little bit here, this is the auditorium, original auditorium. Now we're looking at the Continental Hall. So apologies for jumping around a little bit here. But really the buildings all seem to uh, show their true colors, the, the closer we look at them. All of this is stone pieced together, or cast concrete, some sort of concrete that lasts much longer than what we're familiar with. Even this building, the National Academy of Sciences. Having a lot of old world detail, interesting door. Interior, granite columns, archways, everything decorated. Symmetry is off the charts. Beautiful. Washington, D.C. I heard it's uh, not the best place to visit these days, but um, would like to definitely check these out at some point. The National Geographic Society, one of the centers for the resetting of the archaeological and geographical um, aspects of our New World narrative. The National Geographic Society. And here that we have the gentlemen themselves. What do you think? Everything on the up and up? National Savings and Trust Building, beautiful structure, still stands. Modern day. You can uh, get a sense of the texture again. You have another old world art back here. National Soldiers Home, because you had to have a. Uh, <laughs> have all these weather vanes on the peaks of these. Look at this one. We can get in a lot closer. Uh, Antiquitech laden building. Very fancy roofs. A lot of work would go into making a roof like this. Beautiful structure. Old even for the time of the photograph. Uh, another soldier's home, apparently. This one had to look a little bit more like a castle rather than a what? Chateau? Which is also a castle. <laughs> National Building Museum. One of the last ones I found. Couldn't really find an older photograph of it. But a big, massive brick structure. Here we have an entryway showing us all that detail. Consistent with the old world. Even this looking like, I know it gets a little hazy, but is this just, are these like brick formed, um, crown type features. Very interesting material there. And some shots of the interior for you with these massive, massive columns. You can see how big these columns are. Look at the people down here. Wow. Really amazing. And that's all sorts of mini columns at several different levels of mini columns. Very, it's a vast building. Very large interior. National Building Museum. The Pan American Union building, two year time period to build this in 1908 to 1910. Take a look at the interior. How old is this photograph? You have to wonder. Really, they're doing this in 19, 1908 to 1910 in Washington, D.C. These are, these are old structures, I suggest. Vast old structures with very ornate details. This uh, stonework on the ceiling, arched stonework on the ceiling with uh, inlaid detail. 
all sorts of cherubs, 1908 to 1910, folks. Don't let your eyes deceive you. There's no way that this thing could have been put together in a two-year time period. I'm coming out and I'm saying it. A lot of people don't like it when you, uh, when I, when I don't leave it open for you. You can, you can believe whatever you want. I'm telling you what I believe, and that's it's my channel, and that's what uh, I reserve the right to do. All right, this one is Portland apartment, apparently built in one year. Um, <laughs> demolished in 1962 beautiful structure very eye-catching interesting shape like a flat iron shape this is also giving us a view of the streets the age age of the streets and the trolley cars um, very interesting as we look a little closer to the street level here as well and the ornate detail as we work our way up the structure is truly spectacular why on earth you would tear this down I know what they'll say but this is a, a spectacular structure it really is amazing and it's just an apartment or a hotel all right we'll go back to the post office let's get some details on this 1892 to 1899 so that's a seven year time period to build this puppy. <laughs> uh, we're just getting a little wave from good old Ben Franklin, him and his kite, discovering electricity with his kite, right? You believe that story? It's like Columbus sailing the ocean blue, isn't it? Again, if one, one is a lie, how much of it is a lie? How much can you trust? A few looks of the, at the early or late 1800s construction capabilities in Washington, D.C. on this spectacular post office, which is now, again, I believe, a hotel. All right. The new post office, built in 1914. That's all the only information I could really find on that. Um... Postal Museum, I believe it's uh, used as now. And here's some shots of the interior. So they're really cramming this construction into a short period of time. This really, this va the vast construction, heavy, co co heavy materials, very heavy materials, very precise um, work done on these buildings, and really just trying to squeeze it in, I think, to a very uh, short period of time. Here you can see the Smithsonian Institution, a part of this. Uh, the Smithsonian, again, one of the major culprits for uh, covering up the old world, I suggest, literally, and hiding so much of the truth from the people. The people demand the truth, and we will get it, and we will keep pushing until we get the truth. I'm not afraid to be wrong, um, but we certainly know that uh, what we're being told is, is not the truth. So the Postal Museum, or the new post office, which is not new at all, I suggest. And that, those octagonal uh, rosettes we see repeated throughout the old world architecture. All right, the Renwick Gallery, built 1859 to 1873, disrupted by the Civil War. Um, a part of the Smithsonian, I believe. And here you can see it in the modern day, still standing and still beautiful as ever. And we know that it's dedicated to art because it says on the front, dedicated to art in these uh, really plain lettering compared to the rest of the structure. And just a little view of the interior. You can see those um, mansard style roofs um, decorated ornately right up to the peak on in the interior of this building. The old Central High School, with its uh, stadium, seeing this across the states as well. Many of these uh, amazing, amazingly large high schools with their uh, their fields and stadiums embedded in the earth. Very interesting two-year time period on that one, looking like a castle. Low, low entry point here, like you have to go down to get in. 
Central High School. Another high school, M Street High School for colored people. There you have that divisive narrative that you'll see by the usurpers. They divided us along all sorts of lines. They divide us along race. They divide us along creed. Uh, they divide us along uh, well, um, financial status, educational status. All trying to keep us from each other, I suggest. These are all just, uh, all these divisions I think are just, uh, are petty and, uh, and used again to keep us divided. When we come together, it's game over for these usurpers. That's what we intend to do. The people will come together. Scottish Rite building. Reminding me of the top of the Civic Building in St. Louis, I believe. See if I can dig that up for you for this section. A couple looks. The double-headed eagle. Usurpers hijacking the symbolism, I would suggest. Many of the symbols that we negatively associate with these organizations, I think, were hijacked. And much of them a part of the old world. You can see down here we have some sphinxes out in front. So that those Egyptian t Egyptian motifs tied in with these uh, the double-headed eagle, which you might say is uh, Eastern European, Bavarian, Tartarian. Very interesting, but amazing, amazing architecture. The Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. This is a bit of a ghost of a building. They'll tell us they broke ground on this 103 years ago, 1920, and they completed it just a couple of years ago in 2017. So whatever, whatever you want to make of that, go ahead, but let's check it out. Now here they're telling us this is proposed, right? This is how they cover their tracks. They're saying that didn't stand at the time. This is just a proposed construction. Hmm. Here's the interior. They've been chipping away at this for the last century, have they? Uh, no doubt renovating, altering. Very interesting building. Beautiful. Definitely could this could definitely be painted on. This doesn't have the feel of uh of the old world. I think they do change a lot of the uh uh motifs in these uh structures, a lot of the paintings. Did highlight that in uh, the Paris Opera House video, where they really put something um, uh, awful on the ceiling of the Paris Opera House. Here we have the dome and uh, a tower, looking quite old, not looking recent whatsoever. You can see the weathering. Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. Check out the brickwork on the ceiling. Very, very difficult work to pull off. Beautiful. All right, another Masonic temple. Let's keep moving here. We're getting there. We're getting there. So much to see here in Washington, D.C. National Museum. I couldn't find much on this one. Maybe it's been altered. I'm not sure. So we get into the Smithsonian. This is supposedly a picture from 1867. Uh, looking very, very old, for, even at that time period. Smithsonian, again, um, the culprits for hoarding much of the knowledge of this uh, realm, I suggest. And interesting, of course, that it, it's within Washington, D.C., one of the centers of the political power, or the center of political power for this uh, new world disorder, let's say. Amazing. Natural History Museum, 1926. I pulled the shot of, of Wikipedia, but I thought it was a nice photo, so I wanted to include it. There's the Smithsonian again. There's that building that we looked at in postcard form previously. Spectacular, old, very old-looking building. 
and the interior of it's hard to say what exactly which exact building a lot of these are. There, there's quite a few buildings that fall under the banner of the Smithsonian, but um, again, the culprits of the setting of the new narrative. Here we go, getting a good view of the types of buildings in the area. You can see as we go back all through here, interesting shape here. Hmm. Let's keep moving forward. Secretary, Secretary of War, Taft, hmm. State War and Navy Building. Let's take a closer look at that one. Amazing, one, two, three, four, four structures, five, st five stories, sorry, uh, plus a little bit extra on top. Massive structure. Here we have it from an aerial view. And we have a build time of 1871 to 1888. Statutory Hall, such Statuary Hall, sorry. Not looking like much from the outside and ticking all the boxes. It almost becomes routine looking at these structures as we go through DC to really see, I think, and really piece together that whole um, the myth of Norumbega, is it a myth or are, are we been are we being given that a whitewashed story of uh, that washed town, that washing town? They're washing the true history, I think, with uh, with what we've been told. Here this is the Eastern Star Temple. And this would be the interior of that state dining area. There it is as it stands in the modern day. Looks like they've got their star upside down. Or do they? Hmm. The Franklin School? What an amazing, what an amazing city. Really, truly amazing. Old world, uh, well, old world hub, right? little interior shot of this uh, hotel modern day interior shot we're not sure what has been renovated probably the floor here but I, I'm not gonna say for sure I don't want to speculate too much maybe they're trying to duplicate a look here I don't know if it's original if they're attempting to duplicate the old octagonal ceilings just speculation of course beautiful though beautiful all right the Thomas circle We saw this church earlier. Trinity Episcopal Church stood from 1851 to 1936. This is a very old photograph, supposedly from 1960 or 1863. This photograph, I like this one because they're trying to show us, of course, that the, uh, the capital is under construction, and you can tell that because of the uh, the crane cranes that they like to pencil in here and the scaffolding they like to pencil in. Uh, look in the foreground, though. We we can see the types of buildings that we expect to be constructed for that time period, 1863. We have a, a four-walled structure with a gabled roof. Put a little false front on it, sure, and then fence in this area with some boards. So this is a fantastic example of the old world and the new world, and uh, why we question the narrative, really. And there it is, not long before it was torn down into the 1900s. This is the government printing office, very large structure. Treasury building, speaking of large structures. Vast, this is a vast, vast uh, old world city. I suggest here's a horse and buggy out front looking very frail and massive multi-storied columned building in the background just to give you a sense of that uh, contradiction and remember at the time period supposedly these are going up all over the place here in Washington DC or should I say 
Norumbega and they weren't going up. They were actually, the city was being found dead. What do you think is going on here? Can we trust this as a, as a uh, construction photo? Are we looking at inheritors? Are we looking at forgery? Difficult to say, really. I do not think. We don't we don't really build like this, where you leave, have it completely finished right up to this point, and there's nothing above there. Uh, that makes no sense to me, uh, structurally, uh, um, as part of the building process goes. This is an 1861 photograph, apparently. Looking very piecemeal and sloppy, and nothing like the buildings they're constructing. So again, the assumption is to paint out the people that do the physical work, the construction of these buildings, not the architects or the funders. The uh, intention seems to be to imply that these are stupid people that work with their hands, that don't really think much about the process. They just follow orders and eventually we achieve this beauty that the architect laid out for them. Uh, a condescension to anyone within in the building trades, I would suggest. Um, anyone who does any sort of quality work keeps their workplace neat and tidy and uh, takes a lot of pride in their work. And we would see, I think if these were legitimate, we would see a lot more of an homage to the actual builders and not just the, the money men and the architects. It's the patent office. Nice crisp photograph. There it is again. Fantastic structure. Norumbega. Union Station. Coming to the end of the file now. Um, Designed by Daniel Burnham. I did a video on Daniel Burnham, one of those architects um, that are claiming old world structures as their own. Supposedly, this is opened in 1908, construction starting a little bit vague, looking like 1903 to 1904. Um, suggesting a much, much older structure than what we've been told. And then what that is, is a, is a fiction, fictional story grafted on top of true history to obscure uh, our historical timeline and, and narrative. Really, really a vast structure. Let's let's look at it from above here. You can see all the, the rail lines coming off the back. We've seen many of these types of train stations across the realm as well. St. Louis having massive uh, train stations. Philadelphia, Milwaukee, Chicago, New York, of course. Um, all part of the old world infrastructure, I suggest. A little, little shot of the interior here for you. And there's that front entry monument. And is the writing on this building looking like an afterthought? You see it sometimes because it doesn't always fit. And looking very plain too. But seeming like there's much more to this uh, story than what we've been told. And you can see here a little bit of a different picture with the fountains out front. Are we to believe that this this wasn't created this way? This is in 1907, opened in 1908, we're told. Um, is this a depiction and they didn't actually build it that way? Or uh, have things been altered? You have to wonder. Here's a little bit of work being done on the ceiling area in there see how large these uh, octagonal openings are. You have three tiers of, uh, of decorative detail, concentric tiers, amazing mold, molding work. There we see it from below. You can see how actually, how vast the structure is. The Union Station, Washington DC, Norumbega. All right, we come to the end of the file. Uh, I'd, I'd like to know your thoughts. Uh, if you've got, if you come this far with me, what do you think about the whole Norm Bega idea uh, having to do with DC? Did they hijack the capital of the region 
of the old world and claim it as their own. It certainly seems that's possible. Um, there's a look at the layout again. I think again is suggesting that we're looking at very old world um, structure or city, sorry, infrastructure here. And uh, it's a good possibility that Washington DC is what we know, what we know of as uh, the mythical city of Norumbega. I thank you for joining me on this exploration. Until next time.